Hi, guys. Well, it is a lovely winter evening. So finally starting to feel a little bit like winter up here somewhere in the great state of New York. It is Thursday, January 5th, 2022, and I am thrilled to announce the, uh, are, are we the, uh, I don't know, are, are, are we the the new yeah. Amos, and Am Amos and Andy of the Doomosphere, or who would we be? This is my good friend, Elliot Jacobson from Santa hey, Sam. Barbara, California. Uh, yeah, so we're and tag teaming tonight. I, I would say it is not an absolutely uh, beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous, over-the-top day here. We just got uh, done with enough rain to uh, uproot a few trees. And, and you know, water is actually... Re remember when we went for that walk and I showed you... I that bet that creek is full now. I bet you're not complaining of that. Yeah, so yeah, at any rate, it is uh, a rainy day here in Southern California. So, and you got a, I thought it never rained in Southern California, is what the song says. I think they need to rewrite that song. I, I they're going to be Once rewriting it every rains. day as far into the future as we can see. So, uh, are we over the drought or not? No, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, I, I check out the uh, local lake levels uh, routinely. So, our little Chumash, uh, Lake um, Kachuma, that's out there where we get most of our water from is uh, has gone up from 31% full to 32% full after all of these rainstorms recently. So, yeah, we're on the way back. <laughs> 31% to 32%. Yes, it is not much. It, it is so dry. It's unbelievable. But we're going to get a little bit more rain, you know, and if everything works out just right, we might hit 40% by the end of the season. So um, right. every drop counts. So anyway, guys, uh, we're, we're kind of tag teaming here. So if you're, if you're trying to figure out what is going on, uh, I'm over here at Collapse Chronicles and my CC station and Elliot's over at Climate Casino. So we have Collapse Chronicles meets Climate Casino here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. So I don't know how many of these uh, tag team videos we're going to do, but as long as uh, we're having fun doing them, I guess we're going to keep doing them. So anyway, just so you guys know, so I guess what we're going to do in this video is, since I know uh, a lot of folks know that we just had our I would say our biggest day in, you, in YouTube infamy wouldn't you agree it is uh, certainly up there yeah I mean for you uh yeah well I don't think I've ever had 200,000 views on any video before or 100,000 and and uh yeah so we we hit the big time we hit the big time. It's soft white underbelly. And um, I know some of you are wondering. <laughs> We're just going to tell the story of how that all happened. Uh, I'm watching myself. Uh, I, I love this effect going on over here. What this is, guys, behind me is I'm sitting out in my uh, my organic garden in, uh, in upstate New York. Uh, it's lovely to see summertime back. So uh, what you're seeing in my background is what it looks like at my place in Bugs in a Jar Farm. If you come to visit me next summer, that we're sitting out in the garden on a warm summer day. Just so you know, now Sancho Panza will be coming in and out apparently as this uh, progresses. <clears throat> but anyway... Should I dive in? Uh, just start telling this crazy story. And um, yeah, why don't you just start? Let, let me just bring this up uh, for people. Why don't you just start by telling people what soft white underbelly is and how you got in touch with them uh, or they got in touch with you and uh, the lead up to us sort of, uh, you know, doing our thing there. OK, well, I had never heard of this YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly in my life. Never heard of it. And it was in November that my good buddy, his name is Roy, uh, Roy sent me a link thinking that I would enjoy watching this uh, video of this family of hillbillies. 
Uh, I'm embarrassed. Are they in West Virginia? The Whitakers? Uh, it, it, anyway, so I clicked on and, and I got sucked down the soft white underbelly in, into that rabbit hole. As I say, never heard of this. So it's a station run by a channel run by this photographer, a very successful commercial photographer named Mark Leita, L-A-I-T-A. Uh, I don't know how many years he's been doing this, but he has over 4 million, 4 million subscribers on YouTube. So, uh, you know, he's figured out what people want to hear, I guess. And I don't know how I would characterize the kind of people that Mark uh, interviews on his channel. You can go anywhere from hillbillies to uh, he, he he has a lot of fentanyl addicts, uh, drug addicts, prostitutes, you, you know, these people that just kind of represent a, a, what would you call it? A, 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 uh, a Well, they, they are the underbelly of society, right? They are the people who are out there who's uh, stories we don't know about. Yeah, have and, not have had difficult and unusual lives. You know that have been full of, uh, yeah, just just things that we tend not to talk about in sort of polite society. Whether exactly, it's there you go. Drugs or or yeah. um, incest or whatever the thing is. You know, there's a, some sex workers on there. Um, you know, just just all the things people don't want to talk about. He is giving voice to those people. Well. And I started thinking, the more I watched these, what is the number one subject, the number one subject on this planet, brother, that people do not want to talk? They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to hear about it. Now, oh boy, uh, are we going to use the F word or not on, on this video? Uh, it's fine by me. I Okay, I'm going to make a right. Normally on Collapse Chronicles, I don't use the F word, but... We're going to on this one. People don't want to hear about how fucked we are. They don't want to hear it. There, there is nobody lower uh, than a doomer in in normie society. So I was thinking, I'm looking through here and thinking, why has Mark never interviewed a doomer? As far as I can, I mean, I was going all through his videos. Uh, I mean, I was looking at mother rapers and, uh, you know, yeah. every, every possible combination uh, of subjects that people don't want to hear about. Uh, never, never saw a doomer. So what I did, it, it, it was purely on a lark, purely on a lark. This was, I wish I had the the date of what, what was our i think was was it december 15th that we had the interview with him um the 14th the 14th so i think it was like december 8th or 9th i'm sitting there in my little tiny house my seven foot by seven foot tiny house uh in uh outside of ithaca new york on a cold winter night and I was doing pining. I'm always looking for my doomer chick. So I was having one of my doomer chick wines. Uh, and it occurred to me, I was talking about soft white underbelly in that, what I call a wine. Uh, and it came up in that video and I'm thinking, why don't you get in contact with Mark? So I look, I love it. It's easy to do. He, he's amazingly approachable. So I just emailed them. I found out uh, whatever his contact information is. You can go on Soft White Underbelly and look at how to contact Mark. Uh, so I said, what the hell? Uh, I sent that. I sent the email to him. It was the very day he was being interviewed by Joe Rogan. So Mark was having the single biggest interview of his life that day. It was sometime 
Well, if we were there on the 14th, I'm thinking it was December 7th. This man had never heard of me. I knew that he was being interviewed by Rogan that day. Uh, somehow I had heard that. So I emailed the guy, Mark, why haven't you ever interviewed a doomer that uh, with, with all of these other people? I sent him that email on the very day he was being interviewed by, by Joe Rogan. And Elliot, I figured this man, what would happen to this email is it would go into this black hole and in about six months, maybe his, uh, you know, maybe his secretary would finally get down to it. And I might hear something back in like six months. I sent that email off, brother, in less than 15 minutes. No kidding. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I got a call from Mark Leda. He's at the Austin airport. He thought I was, because I have a 512 number that he got, he thought I was in Austin. And he was ready to interview me right there. And, he, and he's going, and he's going, damn it. Uh, he goes, I'm sitting in the Austin airport right now, brother, uh, and flying back to LA. He goes, I really, really want to talk to you. He goes, I've been wanting to interview a doomer. For so long, I just didn't know how to find you guys. That was what I, I did not know how to find a doomer. That this is how buried we are. Uh, he has no trouble finding, you know, a family of hillbillies right. living out in a trailer at the end of the road in West Virginia. They're easier to find. He was absolutely thrilled than the man. So uh, he immediately. Uh, offered to drop everything he was doing and he was kind enough to fly me out to uh to LA and uh so I asked him you know I said well if I'm going out to LA I just happen to have <laughs> I said you can get two for one right uh, so I have this buddy his name is Elliot Jacobson and I think he might provide a really good balance to me and I said can I bring Elliot along and he goes, you know, any, you know, any uh, Doomer friend of yours is a Doomer friend of mine. Kind of. He said, bring him along. So I called Elliot and, and said, guess where you're going? Well, I said, you drop everything. Yeah, yeah. You said, you said, drop everything, clear your schedule. You know, this is going to change your life. There's nothing like this has ever <laughs> happened to you before. You know, whatever it is, drop it. <laughs> you know. And that like, was it. That was it. 15 minutes from the time I sent that, uh, our, our entire lives, uh, and, and literally on December 7th at 6 o'clock p.m., it had never occurred to me that I was even going to be on Soft White Underbelly, and Within 15 minutes of getting the idea, I had manifested being uh, having the biggest interview of my entire life. I knew it was going to be an adventure, but it really turned into uh, it, it was absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, the Cohen brothers, I think, <laughs> could have uh, could, could make a a film about uh, about the whole trip. Yeah, let me just uh, might... let me just pull that up for people. They might want to just uh, see what we're talking about there. So, so this is your uh, interview there on. Um... Soft White Underbelly, uh, right right there, Doomer Theorist interview with Sam. And uh, you can see it was posted two weeks ago. It has 235,000 views. And uh, how many uh, comments do you have there? Let me scroll down there. You have 5,703 comments as of uh, this moment right now (laughs) to yours. And here's mine. Uh, Just, you know, right next to that is... uh, as my my own uh, one, I am. I guess there's something different about me, Sam. I only have 106,000, um, you know, views. And uh, how many comments do I have? Um, let's just check that out here. I have 2,179 
comment. So right, but between the two of us, we have 340,000 views and 8,000 comments. I don't know if you if you received the email I just sent him an hour ago. I am starting to get get comments a, to my uh, video. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting comments to my video. I am getting hate mail on my video uh, that uh, that was meant for him. Anyway, we'll talk about our hate mail uh, in in a in a few minutes. But let's just uh, well, let me just let me just sort of take people to where this was. Yeah, so so. You flew in, uh, your flight was delayed, you know, oh, you showed God. up, it was a 14 hour flight, you, you know, two hours, hours. We're, we're just happy that you made it, you show up, <laughs> uh, we go to my house on a Tuesday night or a Monday night, and we, you know, the next, the next morning we're out bright and early driving down to um, <laughs> Skid Row, right, in, in Los Angeles, right, we are, we are driving to Skid Row, that, this is our destination right here, this is where this uh, picture I snapped right here is, you know, essentially where we we ended up, right? And we parked the car. He tells us where to park, and we're getting out and looking around. And now and we need to explain to people, Elliot, that Mark his his studio is literally on ground zero in Skid Row. Yeah, yeah. You cannot uh, get any more Skid Row than where he is. No, you are not going to get any more. I mean, he is. Ground Zero Skid Row is where he has his studio, and which is which is not ac accidental at all. I mean, uh, the, the vast majority of people that he interviews, because this is germane to the story, are from right outside his studio door. That uh, the vast majority now he takes occasional trips to Appalachia and Florida and whatnot, but the vast majority of Mark's videos are filmed with people who live on Skid Row, who happen to look a hell of a lot more like me. Yeah, they, they don't look like me at all. Nobody there looks like me. No. Um, well, no, I take that they, back. They're, the people who look like me are there for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> they have a they're going to buy drugs. They, buy they, drugs. They, 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 yeah, whatever it like is. Me, or, 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 because we live there. Right. So, anyway, just so you guys understand that that is where Mark's studio is, is is, is in Ground Zero Skid Row. I, I had never been. Had you ever been to Skid Row? I, I've been down to downtown Los Angeles plenty of times. I, I mean, this was so close to downtown. It was like five blocks from downtown. You can't believe it, right? The seventh street. You know, the, the, this is just an unreal sort of, so he meets us outside his studio, right? And he's kind of like waving us in because we don't exactly know, because, you know, every place is, looks like every other place is just a beat up storefront with a lot of uh, a graffiti written on it, right? And and this fellow opens his door and is like, oh, come to this one. Can I can I show the picture of you and him together inside the sure. studio? Let me, let me show he's that. He's a big one. boy. He's a... He so, really makes me look like a runt in this picture. Well, the guy is kind of tall, right? I mean, yeah, no he's question. six foot. What is he? Six foot seven um, or something? He's yeah, he's no, a he, he's a tall guy. But um, I mean, this is a full scale professional video production studio. You know, <laughs> just the and in the middle of uh, Skid Row. I mean, you just can't believe it. <laughs> cannot believe that behind this door you're yeah. going to see this studio. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it, I mean, this shit is right out of the Twilight Zone, guys. This, I mean, Rod Serling could not have uh, could not <laughs> have come up with this crazy shit. So anyway, he invites us in, and uh, yeah, so one at a time we show up there. I think we got there around uh, just before eleven or so. Um, and uh, first thing, you know, he went with you first. So, um, you know, he, he interviews you and that that's what we that's your video. Right. Is is that interview. So what was that like for you, Sam? Well, you know, when uh, we were going into the interview and, and I'm saying, dude, I said, you got to understand now. I, 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 I OK. I need to tread very carefully here. 
I have another YouTube channel and I might be doing a video in the next few days talking. I have another YouTube channel where I play a character and I am, it, it's a whole different setup than Collapse Chronicles. Collapse Chronicles is my tame channel. You know, the, the stuff I talk about here on Collapse Chronicles is actually fairly tame. So I'm telling Mark, M Mark to this minute is, is unaware that I have a second YouTube channel. To this, uh, I mean, he, he is completely unaware of this right up to this second, as are all of the 2,400 new subscribers. So I'm probably giving away too much information here. But I told Mark, you know, right before he turns the camera on, like, dude, I, I said, you understand that on Collapse Chronicles, I said, I rein myself in. You know, that I don't even say the F word, uh, that it's somewhat of a family, even though I'm a doomer, it's somewhat. And, and I basically said, so what do you want? Do you want, you know, Sam Mitchell, uh, you know, just to be the same person that I am on my show? Or do you want me to say hell with it? Let it all hang out. Well, obviously, he had flown me to, he had paid for a plane ticket to L.A., it's like, dude, get up there and let it out. So uh, I, I basically had 30 or 40 minutes to, uh, to, to try to put in 14 years of being, uh, of what it meant to be a doomer. Basically, the question was, what's a doomer? Was the, was going to be the question? Did this run? What what's a doomer? And you're going to run with this for thirty or forty minutes. So I had thirty or forty minutes to you know to try to you know squish down fourteen years of research about how fucked we are on this planet. I, I mean that's a tall order, brother. How are you going to put? For, like a, it's a 14 year college degree basically in, in, into 30 or 40 minutes he puts me on the stool puts the camera on and says go and i'm sitting like a possum in the damn headlights thank god i had had not one but two cups of elliot jacobson's coffee uh that morning uh good people, stuff. uh good i mean one cup of this man's coffee uh, okay it is it, is like a small well I've never taken speed, but two cups of Elliot's coffee is like a micro dose of psilocybin mushrooms. All right. So I was basically micro dosing while I was sitting there on that stool and I just let it rip. I let it. I, rip Sam, I, I, I think the comments you got speak to you, letting it rip, as you say, you know, what I mean? uh, <laughs> because because you generated like you know, you generated twice as many views as me, you're generating more than twice as many comments. And the reason is because you let it rip because you are saying things in the most forceful, direct, honest, you know, to the point language, right about this. And, you know, while I may have gotten more into the nuance of this or that, you know, you're just speaking in these broad, like, like, look, you want to know the specifics. I've got 14 years worth of videos I've done. You can go look at the specifics yeah. anytime. Let me tell you the broad overview. Well, let me boil it down for you. So I, 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 I sat there, but of course the difference, Elliot, you know, I've been interviewed, I don't know, maybe five times down here in the Dumasphere. But I had never been, ever been interviewed on a, but what I would call a normie channel. And, and you got to understand that soft white underbelly. <laughs> All right. It, it's not exactly a cute cat video channel. Are you following me? I mean, yeah. the people... No, no. I mean, you have, you have very strongly opinionated people who watch the videos on that channel. Yeah, but, but people coming in, I mean, even they 
are somewhat out of the meat of the bell curve, you know, are, are a little bit fringe. Uh, I did not realize how how right wing fringe they were. Uh, I just assumed that it was uh, that it was a lefty audience that uh, that that watched uh, Soft White Underbelly. But uh, it, no, Mark uh, with four million subscribers. But anyway, it was it was the most normy audience. So I had never so if I, I could have had the same interview. You know, if you had interviewed me or, or, or someone down here in the Dumasphere had interviewed me, it, it, you know, it would have gotten a few negative comments. And the vast pe the vast majority of people who already generally align themselves with being Doomers, it, you know, would have agreed with me. But but I had no I, I, I guess obviously I when I first started, I had some concept that I was going to be pissing piece, people off. Uh, but I, I, I have to admit that I, I was I was unprepared for the absolute level of vitriol that is uh, out of what did you so roughly six thousand. So by tomorrow morning, I will have 6,000 comments. I will say 5,000 of the comments uh, are negative. Yeah, uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm scrolling through your comments right at this moment to try and pull up an example of what you're talking about. I have to say, Sam, every single one of these comments looks... Uh, um positive i mean you know 90 percent look positive and i know i'm looking at the beginning uh segment oh that, that's right? what was so weird when it first came out i was absolutely shocked at the very beginning i was getting a lot of and i couldn't believe it but it didn't last long and uh in the let me can i read one of the comments right sure. now he no, couldn't no, possibly be it. gay as some believe here the old style gays of his age tend to be witty, funny, and original in thought. He's derivative, an endless stream of Bukowski, Schopenhauer, Hicks, Carlin, Stanhope, Watts, Cervantes, McKenna, Ransom, Antinatalist, and even his older brother. There's no I think barrier. that's the greatest group of, uh, if I'm part of that guy. Did I hear Bukowski, Cervantes, and Terrence McKenna, and George Carlin, and my own older brother in that comment? Uh, now, I'm not saying I didn't get some positive comments. I, I'm just talking about it, the vast, vast, vast majority of comments, of negative comments were this, which I don't get. I, I used to get earlier in my YouTube career was that I commit suicide, that I kill myself over and over and over and over and over again these people <laughs> if you advocate as i do depopulating the planet if you say there's too many people on this planet eating too much stuff and we need to have fewer people on this planet the automatic knee-jerk reaction. I don't know if these people think they're being original. I don't know if they think they are funny. What they say is, if he wants to depopulate the planet, start with himself. Yeah. That was that, not the one most common comment. Yeah, I mean, that's a rant, but, you know, I like this one. This man has the mind of a child. I feel like I'm listening to a conversation of me and my friends at the age of 16 while we pass the bong around. I'm okay with that one. I don't know if that's a, is that a negative or a positive? I don't comment? know. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, look, here's one. Uh, one of the most interesting interviews ever. This, this guy is correct on so many levels. I suppose time will prove his theory. One fact, not sure this came up during the interview. Uh, but the mass of debt we have is not sustainable. I mean, there's so many things that aren't sustainable, right? So, you know, people pick things. Well, they Elliot, when you when you have 6,000 comments, uh, you know, probably a thousand of them were positive. As I say, I've gotten how many thumbs up has the video gotten? Uh, 
Well, let's just see. You know, my my thing is always to look for a, a 100 to, to um, 1 ratio. If you're over a 100 to 1 ratio, then you're a good video. So so you have 6.8 thousand, right? Up. Thumbs up. All right, and I got 2,400 subs. So yeah, I'll 100 to one, a 100 ratio would be 2,350 thumbs ups. Yeah. So you are you are three times what I consider to be a, a positive number of thumbs up. Um, so yeah, you are you are at six point eight thousand. I just got to check me for that. Now you're talking. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean this is a competition after all, Sam. Right? I mean, yeah, we're really co co competing. This is a. So I have three point seven thousand thumbs up on right. my video that has um, one hundred and six thousand views. So I'm also about three. Three so times. we're about the same, yeah, yeah. About the same, you know. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, we we've gotten hilarious comments, but um, you know, I got to say that that I don't read these comments a whole lot. You know, my wife actually sort of obsessed over the comments the last couple of days. I'm like, she's telling me the comments. I'm not even reading the comments. You know, she's like, well, you shouldn't have called Elon Musk a fascist. It's like, oh, well, that was that was one third of your comments. And that was the comment I got on my video. I never mentioned Elon Musk's name in my in, never mentioned Elon, but I never said the word fascist anywhere in my video. Never mentioned Elon. And, and now I am getting comments. So as soon as he said Elon Musk was a fascist, I'll, and, and, and then people were thumbing up that comment, even though you never said it, even though I never said it. And I, the difference between you and me, Elliot, is, is I am thoroughly enjoying conversing with the people. Um, uh, so I, I am in, enjoying responding back to both my supporters and my critics. You see, and what I, you don't know is that I, I have a long... That. I have a long history of being trolled on social media dating back at least 30 years. And let me just show you what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so here is a random troll thread on a, um, on a website that has to do with casinos. Um, so this, this thread about me, right? This thread yeah. was created about me is Elliot Jacobson calls for a violence and protests on climate change. Um, and, you know, Fortunately, somewhere in this thread, they have now realized that I have this, um, you know, appearance on um, soft white underbelly. So that's all great. But I mean, it's nonstop trolling. My life on on <laughs> social media has been nonstop being trolled for 30 years. So, you know, maybe it's like like politicians, you know, I mean, what is what does Elon Musk or, Don, or or Donald Trump or, you know, anybody think about being trolled after a while? You're so used yeah. to it that it is just like, like, you know, you can't go through your life thinking about these comments people say, these idiotic things people say. It's just you, your life is too short for that. So I just don't read comments uh, for the most part on uh, social media stuff like this that isn't under my personal control. Now, if it's under my control, right? If if something is under my control, then every single troll gets banned, right? Every idiot gets banned. Every every clueless moron gets banned. I have zero tolerance. You, don't have, it. you have zero tolerance. Well, what's happening with me, and it's probably happening with you, what I have had I have banned like four people today. What I have enraged people so much that what they do now, I, because I am suggesting that there's too many people on the planet, uh, they are actually subscribing to my channel. They're not. They're not satisfied trolling me on soft white underbelly. They're actually subscribing to my channel to take their trolling over there to my channel. And I'm sure that I have probably banned 12 of my 2,400 new subscribers. Let me just show people your channel just so that, uh, you know, uh, anybody who's wondering is, is um, will go there. So you have the channel, The Collapse Chronicles. And before, you know, before any of this started, um, 
you had what in the the low five thousands of subscribers, and now you I have. have 5,145 subscribers the day I had that interview. And now I've got, what, 7,600 or something? Yeah, about that. So, so I mean, you've um, almost 50% more subscribers yeah, based yeah. on this one interview. In, in two weeks. In two uh, weeks, so yeah. A after huge... being on the air for four years. Right. I, uh, what took me four years to build down here in the doomosphere for people just finding me has 50% of them in two weeks, because I, I, I mean, it's just, uh, it, 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 it's unbelievable. I noticed. So I, I, so I'm also tracking Mark because he, you know, his interview on Rogan was released the day that you and I were interviewed. As we were being interviewed, his uh, interview with Joe Rogan, who has, what, 11 million instead of four million, I noticed that Mark has gotten about 120,000 new subscribers. I mean, I mean, we are back. So are that back. was a little cut because uh, we had a technical issue, so... We the had a cool issue. Hopefully, was resolved, and, and we are back there. live with with this guy over here, uh, uh, Sam Mitchell. Oh, well, you've got to point the other direction. You're, you're uh, back. Well, all right. So, Sam, um, let me just uh, let's talk about what it was like to be outside while the other person was being interviewed. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that. So, you go first. And when I was in their interview, what happened to you uh, while while I was in there? So I'm standing outside. And what I'm aware is that Mark had hired people to sort of stand guard, you know, be some <laughs> sort of bouncer or or uh, muscle right, right outside his door. So while you're in there, there's these people that look like, you know, you wouldn't know that they are anything other than just some person who randomly inhabits Skid Row. But somehow they have this gig, right? Yeah. And I'm getting a little bit nervous out there I because, bet. you know, I look like me, right? I don't <laughs> look like anybody else. So I decide I'm going to go over to my car and sit in my car. So I'm sitting in my car. It's across the street. We parked across the street. And I'm there for about two minutes. And this woman knocks on my window. <laughs> and and I, I kind of look at her and I roll down my window and she said, are you looking for Jennifer? <laughs> my God. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not looking for Jennifer. So so I get out of my car because now I realize I'm parked in front of this old, like, dilapidated hotel, right? Which you're is parked in front of a whorehouse is what you're Right, right. You're so by the hour. You were parked right by the hour, right. <laughs> so I get out of my car and I decide, okay, where it's the safest thing to do is, is to hang out right in front of Mark's uh, <laughs> door where he has his muscle, right? So I'm hanging out there and this guy walks up to me and he said, he says, um, say, pardon me, how do you spell the word treat? He says to me, right? right? How do you spell treat? And I'm like, like, T-R-E-A-T. -E <laughs> I can't he, believe how naive you are, bro. And, and he goes, no, 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 no. How do you spell treat? <laughs> like, T-R-E-A-T. -E T-A-M-Y-L-F-E-N-W-T-A-C, you know, whatever you want, right? He had it all there inside his jacket. He just wanted you to. Like, whatever you want, buddy. I got it right here. Like, like I am so clueless. I am like, like, you see how I look, right? This is how clueless I was. So I'm just I'm just like like what can I do to pass the time? So and what happened to that guy? Did the did the bouncer come and move him down? No, no, no. The bouncers don't care about that. <laughs> you know, all they care about is somebody trying to break into Mark's studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So um it turned <laughs> out like like two shops down from Mark is this guy selling bicycles. And the bicycle shop, you have to like like picture low rider bicycles with you know the the super decked out spokes and high you know he had like like the most amazing 
bicycles you could ever imagine. None of them were these electric EV nonsense, you know, bikes that you see everywhere. Oh, yeah. They were just like these decked out street bikes, right? And somehow that was the shop. So I managed to pass a, loom, a few minutes, like looking at these, I mean, you arguably um, first tier, right? You could not get any classier sort of street bicycles. So, so eventually I'm like, like, please, Sam, please, Sam, be done. Please, Sam, be done. <laughs> so that was my throat slit. So you were glad to see me emerge. I, I was like 40 minutes, 45 minutes you were in there. Yeah. It was a long 45 minutes. It was a long, a long time. Yeah. So I come out and get him off the sidewalk. So I go out there, guys, while he's in the hot seat. And guess what? Nobody approaches me. Not one person. I am sitting there. Uh, I, I just had a, I, I just pulled up a, a this little beat up old plastic ch chair. Was that or something was sitting out that I could sit on. So I sat there and just leaned up against the wall on Skid Row on this beautiful sunny morning, sitting there just looking like I look. Not one person stopped. Not not one drug dealer asking me how to spell treat. Not one hooker asking me if I was looking for Jennifer. I was completely <laughs> ignored. Yeah. I, I was. I just melted right into the scenery of uh, of Skid Row. Nobody ever would have known that uh, Mark had just flown me out from Ithaca, New York, to be interviewed. I was. I just. Was immediately a denizen of of Skid Row, and and so this is why uh, so many of the people uh, tuning into the video who never heard me say that I lived in Ithaca, New York, uh, which I said in the video, uh, they just thought that I was one of these homeless people, you know, drug addicted. Uh, homeless people, mentally ill lunatics living right outside Mark's door. Yeah, that, I mean, you fit right in immediately, you know? Yeah, that's what they just thought, Mark, that, that I was a mother raper or, a, you know. Yeah, because they see those people all the time, right? I mean, that's, you yeah. know, outside Mark's door. It's like, like who knows who's going to show up, right? Every day is going to be some, you know. <laughs> Yeah, look! Look what Mark drug dragged in from the corner uh, today. So I was a little bit insulted that I I was never offered uh, drugs or sex. Uh, you know, you, all the time you, you, were there. you were actually worried that your episode wasn't going to get aired, right? I mean, you were worried about that, weren't you? Or, well, okay. The one thing that did happen when I was out there the last few minutes was this very nice young fellow, and I don't know where his in he was the guy who was going to be interviewed after you. So he shows up at the door. I mean, I'm talking the last 10 minutes, real nice young man from Atlanta. And what he is, is an Aspie. He has Asperger's syndrome. And I really enjoy talking to him. He was 28 years old. And he had just come out from Atlanta, which is my hometown, the, the day before by himself. This, this man, he had he had just moved out of his parents' home two months ago. He had never lived out of home, it doesn't have a driver's license, never been on an airplane in his life. This young man, uh, you know, on the spectrum by himself uh, got on an airplane flew to LA, found his way to his lodging, uh, and found his way to Mark's studio and, and downtown Skid Row. He had never been away from home in 28 years. This was his first experience. And I couldn't wait to hear his interview. So I'm out there like, man, I wish I could have this guy on my show. And he was this very nice, well-spoken young man. Uh, and he told me, you know, we were talking about, and, and, and he was the one who told me, he goes, well, you understand, Sam, that Mark shit cans, that he understood that Mark shit cans 70% 
of his interviews. And he goes, just because we're getting interviewed today doesn't mean on any level that we are going, that our interviews are going to, and his interview has never shown up. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I mean, ours both showed up. Uh, yours showed up like in a couple of days and mine was about 10 days later or something. Um, well, if Mark doesn't put the goddamn interview on, I'm going to call Mark and say, dude, if you're not going to run this, 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 this I said, I want to interview the guy. I'm going to bring him on to my show. Uh, I have no idea why Mark has it. I mean, he's out there running the damn fentanyl addicts and, and all of this shit again. Like, where is the dude? Where is the Aspie? The, this very nice, intelligent, well-spoken young man. Where the hell is that interview? And I and I wonder like like how I noticed that he interviewed a high school teacher today. That was encouraging. That Mark interviewed a uh, well, he published the interview with a with a normie. He, yeah, you know, let me just show um, show people uh, what that is so they can see that uh, right away if they want to do that. So this right here, this high school teacher interview yeah. with Liz, right? Yeah, so yeah, she that already has sixty one thousand views, right? And, She's and, a high school teacher in South Central LA. Just my God, what she must endure. So I do think what one thing that was talked about on Rogan, I think, was that uh, you are going to see on Soft White Underbelly that uh, I, I don't want to be speaking out of turn, uh, but my guess is that you are going to start seeing on soft white underbelly a a larger uh, cross section of people. But of course, the people he interviews have to agree, <laughs> have to agree to go to Skid Row and sit on that stool. Is uh, it because Mark won't he won't do uh, he, he won't do. Uh, you know, Zoom interviews. Like, so, you know, like I've interviewed, good Lord, over a hundred people on my channel. But imagine if you said part of the deal is, you know, you're calling some very busy university professor uh, in England. You're, you're trying to interview Rupert Reed. Right, uh, right, right. Over there in England and you tell Rupert Reed or who was that guy? I can't even remember his name. The 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 astronomer Roy Al uh, of the United Kingdom, like Martin Martin Rees. I remember when I scored that interview that people could not believe that this jackass from Texas actually <laughs> actually had Martin Rees uh, on the line. You know, I, I imagine. The Mark telling Martin Rees, the, the, you know, the head of the UK Astronomy Society, who's been knighted by the Queen, <laughs> you know, sir, that you, you got to come down here to the skin skin row. Row and sit on the stool. Right. Uh, you think Sir Martin Rees is, is going to go over that? So anyway, uh, I, 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 uh, whoever shows up is going to have to agree to go to Skid Row and sit on that damn stool. So that might <laughs> that might limit the. But the, but I mean that was, I mean for me personally, I know for you, it was, it was one of the great joys of my life to sit on that stool and have that interview. I mean, what an amazing experience! You don't. You don't get two of those, right? There's only one of these in our life, right? I mean, to to go to well, Skid Row for an interview. I'm aiming for Rogan. I am. Uh, well, I, but that's I'm that's aiming. not Skid Row, right? No, that's not. That's Austin, Texas. Uh, Rob, I, I wonder what Rogan's studio. I'm sure is. Yeah, in no, a, no. You should. Con I mean, I mean, you should, you should use soft white underbelly <laughs> as a springboard, right? Next step, Rogan. And yeah, then, that's exactly what I'm doing. And then where do I go? Well, uh, then you testify before a House committee in Congress. I guess it's Tucker Carlson after I... Tucker I, Carlson, right? <laughs> I mean, your your trajectory is already built here. I, uh, if, 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 if Sam Mitchell at Glass Chronicles can get on Tucker Carlson, that will, that will be the greatest moment well, in my life. I got to tell you, like, like when I started this, this doom thing, like my <laughs> thing was that there should be a voice of doom on mainstream media. We should have a, a 
a voice of doom, just like we have, you know, all the other voices. I don't care if it's MSNBC or Fox News, right? There should be somebody who is, is saying these things on some mainstream media channel. This is this is necessary information. And the question is, who's going to do it? So, I, you know, for me, soft white un- underbelly was a huge step in that direction. Right. And we, well, we it's both... the closest thing either one of us have ever had. Yeah. Um, I got about uh, another 15 minutes here um, before I'm going to have to give up this this channel. Um, let us talk about um our the aftermath of this so so i want to just just briefly mention our trip back home um before uh you know well and as all of this was settling into our yeah so so we we get in the car and we're leaving this place right and we're just both cannot (laughs) believe what the hell was that (laughs) what the hell was that right? right unbelievable and and sam says to me I want to eat at a Vietnamese restaurant, right? Right? You, you like, like, you are the master of manifestation. Yeah, there we right? go. So I manifest as soft white underbelly. So. so, so Sam says this to me. So I'm driving through the San Fernando Valley, and I tell Sam I'm going to get off on Topanga Canyon Boulevard, right? So I get off on Topanga Canyon Boulevard. And and what happens, Sam, is that is that I make a right turn. But if I had made a left turn, because we ended up having to to sort of double back a little bit. Yeah. But if I had made a left turn, then then two blocks. I, eventually I did do that, right? And we found like arguably one of the finest Vietnamese restaurants in in all of Los Angeles. I mean, this place was just fabulous. I just want to to bring this place up. I mean, these guys really really deserve it this this is the um, saigon brothers the saigon brothers so so we had a fantastic uh meal there right just absolutely delicious uh vietnamese food at this restaurant and um you know i just think that that i is sort of a funny thing it's like how do you just sort of randomly um you know well, let me. So I, 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 I need to tell the punchline to this story, and then we'll wrap. We'll, we'll wrap it up. So anyway, it was Mark who, uh, who slipped some money in my pocket and said, uh, "You and Elliot go out and have a nice meal." Uh, Mark is a great guy. I, you know, so, I cannot. I, I got to underscore that this this Mark yeah. fellow right here, He's one of the guy. genuinely nicest, most he creative, does. thoughtful people I've ever encountered in my life. Just just immediately you like yeah. this guy and and you think that what he's doing, his mission with his channel is a hundred percent like like this is a good guy. Like like he might not be a doomer a hundred percent, but he he's doomer adjacent as you say, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is just so a he, good guy. he slipped some money, but he didn't have any cash. So he just put it on my PayPal account. You know this this homeless, mentally ill person from uh, Skid Row. So Sam, do you have a PayPal account? Let me buy you. Let me buy you lunch. So he he he, uh, he he bought us lunch. So I had to use a credit card, and I just reached in my wallet and pulled out one of my four mm-hmm. credit cards, and it, it it was the credit card from New York, from this little bank in New York, which is ne- you know I've never used. So anyway, they froze, it, it went through, we paid for lunch, but I guess they froze my credit card. Uh, so anyway, I was at the bank a couple of years, a couple of, day before yesterday. So <laughs> this, is, this is the final uh, story from, from this crazy day. So I go in there and there's this cute girl, probably born at about the year 2000. And she's going through the suspicious charges on my on my credit card. Uh, you know why my credit card got got shut down. And she gets to this word. She goes, "There's this charge from," and she's like looking at it. S A I. G O N. She goes, 
I, she goes, do you recognize that charge? And, and I said, do you mean Saigon? I, I said, are you telling me, darling, you don't know what the word Saigon means? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. She had this girl, I'm guessing she was about 23. She had never heard the word Saigon since the day she was born. And I'm thinking, I am really an old man. And, and, uh, and I said, we had this thing a few years ago called the Vietnam War. And, uh, and I she mean, the last war that we arguably to... lost outright, this, this, this nation, you know, 100% lost, right? <laughs> like lost. <laughs> Never heard the word Saigon. Uh, she got a, you know, Regis Philbin. Uh, I'm probably dating myself for million dollars. Well, or Jeopardy. You, you know, uh, she would not have been able to a 23 year old and Normie in today's uh, in, in, in in today's society never heard the word Saigon and I'm telling you brother I, I just that I, I, that was just one more example of, uh, of, of of where we are on this planet that the the word Saigon has completely fallen out of uh, of the young normies uh, vocabulary yeah uh, no, it's it's uh... <laughs> We're just getting old, Sam. I'm I'm 65 now, by the way. Just just to put this in perspective, I'm officially 63. 65 Mark, 63. Mark and I are the same age, so you were the old man of the three of us. Yeah, no, and uh, you know, it, it's it's an interesting thing to to um, kind of look at at the generations that are out there, right? You know, because you can kind of look at 50, 40, 30, 20, and so on, right? And and we. Grew up, you and I grew up without technology, right? Without computers, without smartphones, without video games, right? We grew up with five channels on the TV, yeah, maybe six. Yeah. And, you know, so we're the last generation that kind of were cavemen, right? <laughs> In some sense. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to communicate a lot of these these things anymore uh it's just it's not in my my domain but look we're uh, anachronisms we are anachronisms but we're anachronisms but we're also futures right because we're 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 seeing based on this trajectory right that we've had sort of since i mean we were sort of became aware right at the beginning of the last point in human history when we could have done something yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Like, like 1970, maybe right around still the fall a of Saigon. <laughs> right. Maybe Saigon, 1970. Around the fall of Saigon was our last hope. That was it. Right. <laughs> so, so Saigon, that, that's a beautiful point, right? The fall of Saigon is like the fall of <laughs> our last hope. After that, it was done. Right. So, so yeah. you and I. So the fall of Saigon is your last hope that you know you're fucked. <laughs> so we've been fucked since the fall of Saigon. I'm, I, yeah. All been downhill since the fall of Saigon, and all but, Saigon means now is a delicious damn uh, Vietnamese lunch. It, it was one of the best little local <laughs> meals I've had ever. And I, Saigon didn't fall for nothing. No, we didn't. We got their food on what? Ventura Boulevard. Take the Depanga Canyon exit. Hell and, yes. So. So Sam, it's been, fun. Um, it's been you know, fun. We've been going a little bit more than an hour here, and we will we will do this again a few a couple more times in the next couple of weeks. So uh... yeah, I just you know I think this is this is great. Um, this sort of information where people get the real inside view, you know, it's like it's like you can speak in these big you know sort of aphorisms, these general generalities, but people love to hear the details. They like the minutia of everyday life. That's that's where it gets, you know, interesting to people, and and the the fuckery, the pure fuckery that <laughs> led to us being interviewed by Mark, right? Like the the conspiratorial fuckery of the universe there that had to come together for this to happen. Exactly. Just, I mean, just beyond me. 
you know. I had to hear you talking about the universe and manifesting. So we're going to see what you and I are going to manifest in 2023. But I have an idea, brother. You and I are going to have some laughs. Uh, well, all the shit coming down on our heads in the yeah. year 2023. You and I are going to have some laughs. And, uh, yeah, it, it's there's going to be it's quite a year ahead, and and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm already breathing a deep sigh, and I'm I'm I mean, there's some comedy and tragedy every single day right now going on, and and so. Yeah, looking forward to it, Sam. So Miguel Cervantes would, would, is rolling around in his grave, wishing to hell he was alive right now to be chronicling this uh, this year. <laughs> so the the ghost of Cervantes can join us. And anyway, brother, let's do this again real soon. So all right, uh, a, to a toast to you, my friend. Uh, one last toast, and and I'm going to close it out. And all right. <laughs> A Bye, guys. All right. All right. We'll see you later, Sam. Later.